Hi everybody. So what I want to talk about today is basic puppy agility. Now a lot of people are interested in agility and they want to get involved in it and I always tell people that you absolutely need to take a professional class before you try to teach your dog anything related to agility. Uh, it's very very complicated and your foundation is extremely important and if you mess up your foundation it can really set you up for a lot of heartache down the road. So First and foremost, please find a, a reputable agility trainer to work with. Now that said, if you are a person that has basic agility knowledge and you have some stuff at home, what can you do with your young puppy? Now there is a idea out there that I see on Facebook a lot where people claim you can't do agility with their dog till it's a year old. Now I can only think that this must be coming um, from what I call the Facebook echo chamber, which is where people repeat things they've heard a lot, but they don't actually have a lot of personal knowledge about it. So I've been involved in agility uh, about seven years now. I'm not an expert. I've only just started trialing with my current dog, um, but I've been around it a lot. And I'm gonna tell you, anyone who says you don't train before a year has never ever been involved in agility. That's just not how it works. I don't know a single person in the agility community who buys an agility prospects and waits until they are a year to train them. It's just not something we do. We train from day one for agility and we do things in a very specific way that lends itself to being good for agility later on. And it's a little bit different sometimes from even how basic obedience is taught. Of course, we do work on basic obedience, but we don't go through basic obedience and then go back and teach agility. Most people in the agility community train in a parallel fashion, which means that we learn agility basics and obedience basics at the same time. Now, when people talk about waiting until they're a year, what they're really talking about is jumping and um, some of the contact equipment. You don't want to jump a dog a lot or do a lot of high impact contact equipment or a lot of high impact weaving until they are done growing, which is around a year to 18 months old. However, if we waited that late to start them, it would be almost impossible to catch up to our fellow competitors. You can enter AKC at eight, uh, I'm sorry, 15 months. Uh, some other venues have to be 18 months, but most people start competing between 18 and 24 months. And it takes a year of foundation work before you even start really working uh, sequences that are more than a few obstacles. So you definitely want to start this very, very early. Most people, from the day their agility puppy comes home, they start training obstacles. What we don't do is we don't weave them and we don't jump them over anything very high. The general rule of thumb that I've always been taught from my agility trainers is that a puppy should not jump anything taller than its wrist until it's six months old, which basically is something it can walk over, okay? Um, you don't jump anything over the knee until they're a year old. So when they're a year old, that's when we start moving the jumps up to full height and we start closing up our weaves and, and getting into that. But you can absolutely take eight week old puppies and do all your basic foundation stuff and I strongly, strongly recommend it. So I'm gonna turn the camera around here and I'm just gonna show you a few basic agility obstacles that are perfectly safe for you to do with eight week old puppies or if you're a breeder who has your own uh, puppies, you can do this with six week old puppies. <laughs> um, it will not hurt them. And, and as long as you keep it fun and, and short, short, short sessions, this is great intro work for your dog sports career. So let's turn the camera. Okay, so first, tunnels. Tunnels are super low impact. Um, any puppy can do tunnels. I start out keeping a play tunnel underneath my uh, coffee table inside the living room. And so I just, tunnels are a part of their life from day one. Uh, Sonic is 11 weeks and she's been working on her tunnels. Let me see if I can get her to come over here. Sonic! Sonic, yeah, good girly. Good girly, what a good recall that was. That was a wonderful recall. Yes, it was. Good for you too, Nago, even though I wasn't calling you. There you go. So you can start with these tunnels. Um, it helps if you have a partner on the other side to call them. In the beginning, you can just kind of toss a treat and just get them, you know, tunnel! And then run over to the other end. Sonic! Sonic! Oh, good girl, get it! That's a perfectly acceptable thing to do with a young puppy. The next thing you can do is start preparing them for the pause table. And what you can do is you can take a uh, piece of plywood. This is actually the top of an old uh, table I have. It's about an inch tall. As you can see, she had no problem simply just walking up on it. You notice there's no jumping here. And just start feeding the table. Just start getting them used to going on the table and using that word. You know, I start saying table. And then if they've got uh, the concept of down, you can start working on that too. So I can start going down. Yes. 
and every time she goes down, reward her. If we've started on any kind of a stay, we can also work on our stay on the table. We're still very, very early on that, but it is something we're working on. Something else you can do is if you've got a tire jump, you can lower it to the ground. As I was saying, something else you can do is if you have a tire jump, you can set it all the way on the ground. Sonic! And you can start teaching them to go back and forth through the tire. Come here, baby. Good girl. See, so notice there's no actual jumping there. She's just walking through it. You can just start tossing treats through it. Yes. That's something you can do. I have here, this is actually an old uh, broken teeter-totter. It is completely flat on the ground um, and it has no wobble in it at all. And I just let her just walk over it. Come on, Sonic. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. And you can just practice just letting them walk over it, getting used to that surface. Good girl. Yeah. You can start running through jump standards with the uh, bars on the ground or on the very lowest rung. So as you can see, I don't actually even have a bar here. It's just the standard itself. But you can start getting them. Sonic! You can just start teaching them to run with you. Yeah, good girl. Nago says he's helping. Sonic, oops, we missed one. Come here. Come here, Sonic. Come here, Sonic. Ready? Ready? Yeah, good girl. So we're just teaching her to go over and through the jump standards. Um... And then we can start something that will one day become our weave poles. We're not going to weave until she's close to a year old. But what we can do, we can take these, these are called two by twos. And we can start teaching her to run down the middle of them. Because the way we're going to teach her to weave is by taking these two by twos and slowly closing them up. I've got a video about that on my channel if that's something you're interested in called two by two weave pole training but right now all I want her to do is to run down the middle of them which is similar to just running through the jump standards Sonic so you can just start teaching her to run ahead of you yeah good girl um, if you have a remote control treat dispenser which I do have in the house you can use that to start encouraging them to independently run through here I don't want her necessarily following me I want her running through on her own Sonic so I'll start tossing the treat yes see and Nago says he's going to help He's not helping very much. Sonic! Good girl, go! Yes! Did Nago let you have that? Um, you're just teaching them go. You're just teaching them to go between the, uh, the two by twos. You can take a cone or a trash can or a jump uh, standard like this and start teaching them to follow your hands. So I can sit here and I can go like this and just start... Uh, Nago, can you go on, baby? Go over there. Good boy. Come here, Sonic. So I'm just teaching her to follow my hands around. Yes. Yes. That's eventually going to be important for teaching directional cues and backsides and things like that. You can teach them to go around it to the right. You can teach them to go around it to the left. Um, so those are a few things that you can start out doing. Uh, even with the very, very, very young puppies, in addition to your basic obedience, that will really help you later on when it's time to work on your uh, agility stuff. I strongly recommend that if you're a serious agility person that you do get this started really early. You want to work on teaching them to follow your hand cues. You want to get them familiar with all the equipment. There's some other things that I, I don't have out here, like uh, what's called a wobble board, uh, which is just a little board that kind of wobbles underneath their feet. Uh, those are great. I've got one of those out at my trainers. You can also do um, like a little ladder, like just lay a ladder flat on the ground and teach them to walk through it, which teaches rear end awareness. Hold on and I'll show you guys that. So just take, uh, you can make a ladder like this out of PVC or you can just use a regular ladder you have around the house. And Sonic! And you're just going to start teaching them to walk over the rungs. Nago, you're not helping. All I'm doing here is we're just working on her learning where her rear end is. I should have put Nago up for this demonstration, guys. I'm sorry. But, you know, he's helping. And you just start teaching them how to pick their feet up and stuff. So, that's something else that you can do. Alright, guys. I hope that helps all of you who are planning to go into agility one day. Uh, good luck with your future agility dogs. Feel free to send me any uh, messages if you have questions.